Halloween craft, we're going to be making what I like to call my cheeky devil outfit. These are the supplies you're going to need. You're going to need a hot glue gun, some hot glue, piece of sandpaper, or an emery board, either would work, a pen, some long twist ties, like I got these off of packaging, um, I didn't buy them, but that's so I can make the tail, so I can have something to bend for the tail shape, a pair of scissors, plastic bag, snaps, you don't have to use snaps, I prefer snaps, so I always use snaps, I think it was two something for this, like two 50 maybe, give or take, 215, something like that. But I don't I don't really prefer Velcro, but if you wanna use Velcro, you can use Velcro. Um, you're gonna need a piece of fabric. I wanted to get a t-shirt or something, but I live too far from the thrift stores now, so I couldn't. So I just went into Walmart and picked up that fat quarter. It was like $1.47, I think. All the rest of them were 97 cents, but of course the one I needed was $1.47, so but whatever. Um, you're gonna need a needle and thread, um, some cardboard, like the thin kind, like um, this is just a cereal box, an old cereal box that I've broken down. And you're gonna need some paint. I used two kinds this time. This is just flat, regular paint. And then I put this metallic paint over top. You don't have to do that, you can omit that. You can just use the regular flat paint if you want, but I just thought this would give it a little extra something, and I already had it. But if you don't want to spend the money on the extra paint, you don't have to. So, this is all you're going to need to make the little cheeky devil outfit, and I'm going to close here, and I'm going to bring you on in for the craft in a second. First thing you're going to want to do to start making your little cheeky devil outfit is what I did, and I just free-handed. This is a little like angled kind of triangle for the tail tip. This is one of the horns. I just did two the same exact shape. And you're going to need a little like rectangle type shape rounded at the end and then um, chiseled in at the top. It can be any shape you want, but this is just the shape that I used. And then this is the pitchfork part. This is how I freehanded it, and then I cut it out. So you can see it's just, you know, <laughs> part of a box. But this is what I did, is I freehanded everything, how I wanted the shapes, and I measured them against the doll to see about how big I'd need them so that they'd be the right size. You can do that, it's real simple. Um, and yours don't have to look exactly like mine, but this is just what I did. So what I did was, is for each piece, I cut out at least three of each. I stacked them together, well I sanded them first. I took my little sanding block, and you can see, I just went like this to rough it up. That way when you glue them together, they stick better because this is shiny and it has a plastic coating. But I did three layers of everything at least. Some I did four, I think, to make it thicker. I think I did four on this stick part and three on this, three on this, the little horns, and three on the little tail tip. So I think this is the only one I did four, was for the stick part, just so it's a little more sturdy and thicker. Because these are really thin, but it's easier to get a precise shape with a thinner box like this. So that's why I did it this way. So once you make all your shapes, cut them out, stack and glue them together, you're gonna wanna paint them. And you're gonna wanna take your little piece of plastic, lay it out. This is just an old bag from one of the trip dolls I got. You're gonna wanna take your plastic and lay it down for yourself so that once you coat these you can just lay it on top of that and then it'll be safe to dry and if it gets a little on there you don't have to worry about it and it won't it usually won't stick I didn't have a problem with any of mine sticking so you should be all right so once you've done all that that's why I do this first so this can dry and 
you're gonna do multiple coats. You're gonna wanna do, I did, if you're just gonna do this, the straight red color, all you're gonna wanna do is three or four coats and then you should be good. You might wanna put a little layer of uh, sealant or maybe like the glue water mixture, like I said in the other video to seal it in. But since this is metallic and glossy, kind of, I didn't need to do that. And I used two layers of the regular paint for mine. And I think three layers, because this is thinner and I wanted it to look more metallic, of this metallic paint. So five layers of paint all together. And I let each layer dry in between. And I was working on the other half of the outfit while I was letting this dry. That's why you do this step first. So we're gonna move on to that. The next thing I did was make the skirt. So what you're gonna wanna do is take your scissors and your little fat quarter and unfold it. And what I did to make the skirt is, see where it's already folded? It has the line. I cut across the whole fat quarter, this whole entire thing. So I was left with just like this much fabric. So say this is just one piece that I cut. This will be the skirt. All I did from there is I took about this much and again, I cut all the way across. That way I had a little separate piece. So I had a piece about this wide that was separated from the skirt and then this much left so for the skirt. What you're going to want to do from there is when you have your little piece like this that you've cut off the top, you're going to want to fold it over like this. This would be your cut piece for an example. You're going to want to fold it over like that in half. But since this, you know, it would be like that because this is about as wide as what I use. So you would fold it over like that. And I fold it in the ends like this so that they look finished. And then I stitched down the whole thing for the waistband. Then I took what was left in my rectangle and I hemmed all four sides I took my needle and thread and I sewed a hem along the bottom and I turned it up about this much. I don't know if you can see that. I turned it up about that much and sewed all the way along the edge and about that much on the sides and then I just did a straight stitch all the way down to make sure that they wouldn't fray or anything so that the edges would be nice. Once you've stitched all the way around and made your edges neat and you have your rectangle and your little band piece, what you're going to want to do is take and pleat and pin your fabric. So you have pleats and you're going to want to pin your rectangle for the skirt to the little waistband. That's how I did it. You can also take a running stitch and I'm just going to do this real quick and then pull my needle out so you can see. And just take and do a running stitch like that and then pull it, and then you can do pleats that way. If you don't know how to do pleats by hand, you can always just do a running stitch and then pull it tight so that you can, you know,
have your little scrunches on your skirt. And here's the skirt, so you can see. This is where I've hemmed it at the bottom. And then up the sides. And see, you can see what I was talking about. Here's the little waistband. And I did, I hand pleated this, like I said. I put all these little pleats in myself. But you don't have to sew it that way. You can just do what I showed you where you do the running stitch. And that's the little skirt. And I use the little snaps. I use two snaps. So that you can have your cute little skirt. Really adorable. Next, what you're gonna wanna do is make the top. What I did was I used part of a pattern that I had already made. That's why it's marked jumpsuit top. This is just a little like crappie top. It'll make sense once I do this. And then this would be like that once it's sewn. So see what kind of top it would make. Um, I've modified this and got it to where I know that it works. I'm working on getting um, a way to show you how I make my patterns or just making my patterns available. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do that yet, but if you have any suggestions, just let me know because I make patterns sometimes. A lot of times I'll just freehand stuff but I also do make patterns. So when I do use a pattern, I try to like explain it to you guys where you could do it yourself the same way, but I know that you're not gonna have this exact pattern that I have to make it exactly the same way that I'm gonna make it. But this just gives you an idea of the shape. You could, you know, screenshot this and then blow it up and then fit it to your doll if you really, really had to, if you wanna make the exact shape that I make. But what you're gonna wanna do is take it and pin it to your fabric. And for this pattern, since I've used it before, I knew that I was gonna need a little more um, on these little end pieces for the closure because I was gonna do a snap instead of making it part of a jumpsuit. So I added a little extra to it. So I like a quarter inch maybe all the way around, just gave myself a little extra seam allowance so that I knew I would have plenty of room so that I would have enough seam allowance all the way around to sew it and not, cause I know that this fabric like this frays. So I gave myself a little extra turn in so that it won't be so close to the edge and it won't fray on me. You're gonna wanna cut it out. Um, these little cutouts, I don't cut out right away. I just cut out the basic shape. I go straight here because if you cut that out, then you won't have the seam allowance, the extra, it'll be weird. After you've cut it out, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is sew your darts here. That's what these are. So you would take and you would have your dart and you would sew along, like you would pick how high you wanted it. And I sew across like this and make my stitch locked. And then I come in and sew like this, down it. To make my little um, darts. And then the same thing with here. If this was the fabric, you'd wanna fold it like that. Sew your dart on either side. And then once it's sewn, you can, I'll show you. 
once it's sewn, it does kind of this thing. So that's what that pleat is for at the top. So if it was sewn, it would look like that. Once you've done these darts down here, so you'd have this and the top ones both done, you're gonna wanna go around the whole entire thing and hem the edge. You know, just you would take it, turn it in about a quarter inch, take your needle, and sew around it. Once you've done that, once you've taken your top, cut it out, sewn your darts, went all the way around, stitching it, you know, for your seam allowance to make your edges clean. The next thing I did was I cut about a piece, I'd say that wide. It was actually a scrap piece that I had, but it was a piece about this wide and about this long too. So you would cut all the way down and you would end up with like a piece about that wide. What I did from there is I folded it over and then folded it like this to make sure I would have enough for two because these are going to be your two little sleeve cuffs on the little top. So once you have this, I did the same thing as the waistband. I turned it in like this, turned it in like that, and then when I folded it, I had a nice clean edge, and then I sewed all the way down it, and I did it this. I did this here at this edge also. And then I took my needle and thread and straight stitched all along this. The in and out stitch like this. The in out. This stitch. All the way to the end. But that I did want to say I cut it in half first. So I had two separate pieces. But I did do this and then sew it all the way to the end of the half a piece. Then I pulled the string tight and made gathers. And here's what the top looks like. Of course, I added a little snap like I did on the other piece on the skirt. These are the little arm things I was telling you about where you do the little running stitch. See how it's frilly? That's how I did that. And then once I was done, I just stitched them to the corners of the top there so that the arms can go through. And the last thing I did was put on my little snap. So there's the top, and here's the skirt. To make the tail for your cheeky double, what you're gonna do is take your little pieces of uh, twist tie, whatever. You can take the small ones and then wrap them together. Like if you have small ones from like bread, you just basically need to be able to bend and stuff so that the tail has movement. That's why I picked these because I was going to throw them away anyway and I figured why not use them for a craft because this one's actually really nice and thick and pretty long. So, and this one I figured I could use it as extra to like put it around the waist and tie it off underneath the outfit. So what I did was I took this and I wrapped it 
in fabric and then hot glued it. That's all I did. So I just ran a bead of hot glue, stuck the tail in it, and then rolled it up to make the little tail so that I can put the little devil tail end onto the tail. And this is what they look like, the little pieces, after you've painted them. You can see the metallic in mine. This will be the little tail end. But this would be covered in the fabric. And that's basically all you do. Once you've covered it in the fabric and you've let it cool and this piece is all dry and everything, you just want to glue that on the end to make the tail. Now one thing that I did forget to tell you that you needed, and I'm going to add that to my description at the beginning, is these are your little horns, right? There they go. All this is, and everybody's done this who's done doll crafts, this is just the ring off of the top of a Coke 2 liter and all I did was snip it and it just worked out that it's already red so I don't have to do anything to it. I'm just going to want to take your little devil, cheeky devil horns and you're going to want to glue them like that. to the little coke ring to make it into a headband so that you can put it on your doll for the costume. And for the pitchfork, you know, it starts out like this. Then you stack and glue your layers together where it's thicker like this and paint it and all that. Then you have this part and the stick and you wanna hot glue those together. And that's what I did. Here's my little pitchfork, all completed. You can see how this is thicker. I'm pretty certain I did four layers on this and three at the top. And I also, up here at the top, I don't know how well you can see that, but I took my little sanding block and I took the sanding block and I sanded down part of this so that it was thinner at the top so that it wouldn't stick out so far. I don't know how well you can see that. But that's just a little thing I did. That's nitpicky. If you want to do that, you can. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to. But I just wanted it to be more aesthetically pleasing. So that's why I did it that way. And that's all your little accessory parts. So when you're done with all that, you put it all together and you have your little cheeky devil costume. And this is my little cheeky devil costume all complete. I am so in love with it. I can't even tell you. I've been planning these things in my head and wanting them to turn out good and they actually did against a lot because you know how when you plan something and you want it to go a certain kind of way and then it doesn't and you're like, darn it. but. This went exactly how I wanted it to. I absolutely love her. I love the outfit, and this outfit can go on most Barbie bodies. Most of these Barbie bodies that are out now, except for Curvy and um, like Skipper or Stacy, it won't fit those, but most of the Barbie bodies, it's gonna fit those because I've tested it on a couple other ones. I just liked it on this one, and I don't know how many of you will remember her, I body swapped her. I liked her face and her hair much more than the doll that body this was. And they were exact same skin tone and they had a similar face. So I didn't feel bad because it was like the other face didn't speak to me as much as this one. So that's how come I used her and I fixed her up a little but I got rid of her other body because I didn't really care for her other body. 
and this one is sort of like made to move. It's all jointed, but I can't tell you how much I love this. It's so cool. Um, just real quick. I know you've seen these or maybe you haven't in my other tutorial, but this is what, there we go. This is what they look like after you've put, I put actually two layers because I wanted them to be good and protected so that the paint wouldn't come off of the glue mixture, glue and water for my two little pumpkins. Thought you guys might like to see what they look like better completed because when I did the video I hadn't let them dry or put the sealer on them yet so they just oh they're so cute I love it I love Halloween in case you can't already tell it's like my favorite holiday besides uh I think Christmas you know as far as like for fun like I love Thanksgiving and I love you know Easter and all that stuff but I love Halloween just because it's so fun. So, you saw this up close, but like her little, um, devil horns. They're just really, really cute. And it was really easy. Like I said, all I did was use the little thing off of a Coke bottle. And I made this bag extra. Same way I did in my other tutorial. I just used white craft paper on this bag instead of the recycled it still was recycled but it was just a piece of paper that I had used to scribble on and I had a little bit of it left and I thought oh that'd make a cute little ghost bag so I wrote boo 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 all over the sides and everything and I just thought that would be really really cute I just love how it all came together like all my little ideas my tail see that's why I did the little two snaps so it can peek out of the little hole and the outfit still looks cute I just absolutely love it and I put my ruby slippers on her because I wanted her to have red shoes and since I haven't done my Dorothy doll yet I gave her the little red slippers and I put this little piece of fabric down here because my countertop was so slick she wouldn't stand she kept sliding and I just didn't want to have to keep fighting with her. But I tell you, like, do this for yourself. It's so fun. And I love being able to dress up my dolls for the season. So I actually have one more outfit idea that I'm still gonna do. I actually have two outfit ideas, but one's a costume and one's just an outfit. So I'm still gonna do them even though I know today's Halloween. I tried my best, I did three videos before Halloween and I started on like Tuesday morning. So, you know, I've been trying to do all my life stuff and do the videos and I just love sharing with you guys. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you to all my subscribers, new and old. And thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Like and subscribe if you feel. I would really, really, really love it. I hope you have the happiest of Halloweens. Take care, and I will see you soon.